You're listening to Thrive, your agency resource, the only podcast of its kind for creative, media, and technology leaders who are ready to dive deeper into consciousness, leadership, and agency growth. I'm your host, Kelly Campbell. This year, Thrive is brought to you by E2M Solutions, a trusted white label partner to hundreds of digital agencies across the globe. Visit e2msolutions.com forward slash thrive today. Welcome back to another episode of Thrive. With so much talk on efficiency, productivity, and capacity in the agency world, I wondered if these could actually bleed over into the conversation about building healthy organizational culture. Today, I'm joined by Marky Murray, who's the CEO and founder of Ditto, a systems and process consultancy, helping teams optimize their operations to get the most out of their technology and to eliminate stress and burnout. Those things might seem like they're in opposition, but Marquis is going to tell us how they're not. (laughs) So thank you so much for joining me today. I'm very, very interested in having this conversation because I think that there are so many agency leaders who really don't see these things as being interconnected and how you don't necessarily have to choose between one or the other. So hi and thank you. (laughs) You're welcome, Kelly. It's good to be here. I'm, I'm looking forward to the chat. So let's start out by kind of outlining this opposition. I know I see it with my clients all the time. It's almost like culture and efficiency sit on opposite sides of some scale, right? And it's like, if we have really healthy culture and everyone's feeling really fulfilled and everyone's feeling psychologically safe and the work is getting done, like that is one option. Or the other option is we have like our systems and processes documented. We're hyper-efficient, everything's streamlined. We can have that kind of culture, but you're kind of positing that you can actually build culture through efficiency, which is super fascinating to me. Absolutely. Yeah. To elaborate on that, you know, thought even more culture when we think about it is, or when it's, you know, dictated to us, when we hear about it on LinkedIn, it's typically linked to happy hours and how much time we're getting in, you know, FaceTime with our coworkers and, you know, things like that and how happy people are coming to work. And that seems to like live on one side of the argument. And then there's the efficiency side. We're all trying to work smarter. We're trying to use more tools and automation to get our work done so that we can have more time to ideate and and to think and to create things. But then what I see in a lot of cases is we're trying to be so efficient and going about it the wrong way that it leads to burnout because we're pushing people to do more. We're pushing them to work harder. We're pushing them to stretch themselves. And it's often tied to these lofty goals where we're trying to bring them along and say, let's just work hard. We'll push and we'll push hard through this, this quarter and the next quarter it will be better. And it quite often is not. And so you have this kind of opposition. What we're talking about today is culture is limited to just how we feel at work and what amenities there are that are available to us at work. And then there's this other side that we don't often talk about. We, we praise the people that are more efficient. We praise and spend time, you know, um, building the systems that we need to create more efficiency, but we don't often think about what that is doing to people's mental health and their capacity. Right. And so there's this there's this divide and it just keeps getting wider and wider. But the message that I want to bring is that and I'm working to eliminate burnout, eliminate the, this opposition and create more clarity, create more visibility, create more unity between the culture that we know and the culture that needs to really exist. And so the culture and you're, you're in the marketing space, a lot of your listeners are in the marketing space. We think about branding versus marketing. Marketing is what we say about ourselves. And we hope to attract people. And then the branding is what others would say about us. So how, how they view us, right? And so your culture, whether it's a good one or a bad one, right? Everyone's got a culture, but it's, it's, it's where do you want your culture to live? And I think that there are different areas that are often missed when it comes to culture. And we should be thinking about productivity, efficiency, time and space for team members to ideate, as well as to get to know each other and have a positive work environment. So there's a lot that we can explore within that, but I think that there's often that missing void in the middle that we overlook because we're thinking about culture and efficiency in in two different areas, and they're absolutely not. 
Yeah. So before we get into how you actually implement and handle this with your own team at Ditto, why is all of this so important to you? I'm curious about your background and kind of the context with which you you bring to this discussion. Yeah, I, I talk about this quite often. I have my own struggle with with mental health and have gone through burnouts and live with anxiety daily around work and getting ahead and doing more and being more efficient. And there was a time when I used to run my own marketing agency years ago, and I really started creating systems and creating templates for how we work and creating SOPs because I was the person taking on all of the work. Anytime that there was a question, I was the one with the answer. And for a while, I actually liked that I was that person, but I liked having all the answers. I liked being the go-to, but the, the truth is that I was the freelancer moving into the business owner, entrepreneur, CEO role and having a hard time letting go of the things that I used to do when I first started. And so I would say yes to everything. If there was something that was too difficult for someone, I would take it on. And I quickly found myself in a situation where I am staying up until three, four o'clock every single morning because I had let my tasks that I needed to complete sit on the back burner because I'm taking on everyone else's. So what was our culture at the time? Our culture was that the CEO doesn't trust his people and you know can't let go of control and has to have everything run exactly how he wants it to run so that was our culture and the people that i was hiring and training you know they felt like they weren't involved in the business they felt like they couldn't make decisions they felt like they had to run everything by me first and so that was really our culture and i thought it was more efficient because i was the subject matter expert and i could do it faster and i could do it better and that was just better for everybody until it started to plague me Right. And so I went through this series of just just burnout, really, where it started to impact my mental health more. I mean, it was it was difficult getting through the days. I couldn't focus. I was staying up all hours of the night. I started neglecting my physical health, eating late at night and just, you know, telling myself that I was rewarding myself for a hard day's work, but just really doing what I could to get through. And so that was probably my rock bottom from like a business owner perspective. And recently I put out a post on LinkedIn, um, a photograph that I had taken at one of those, you know, ungodly hours when I was working. And I just, I look at it and I'm just, I'm so sad to look at that because I was, I, I let it get out of control. And so moving into what I do now with, with my team, really like I never want that to happen again. If I start to see, some of those old patterns come back up, I know that I have to do something about it right away because it's so easy to fall back into that trap. And so the message I'll often share with my team, and I can say this because we just had a meeting on this a couple of days ago, it's that our company is family first, right? I always tell my people that you are the most important person in the world and you need to take care of yourself so that you can be better in those other areas, so that you can take care of your family so that you can live in your in your zone of genius. And so when it comes to how we operate now, I feel that it's my role and the role of every single leader to create the systems in the business so that your people can have all the tools that they need to get through the day, so they can feel empowered to do the work, that they feel like there's autonomy in the workplace as well, and that they can do work on their own terms, right? And so especially in this remote landscape. I'm a firm believer that when people show up to work, they really make the choice to show up, right? And so I want to make sure that I've done everything to provide for them so that they continue to show up and, you know, remain happy and engaged throughout the process. So that's probably like a the quickest overview I can give you, right? As to why I'm so passionate about this is it's like, I, I've been through it. I know what it feels like. We're working to eliminate that for our customers. And I want my people that are working with me to understand that that is our vision. And if we're going to be prescribing the solution, we better be living that solution as well. Hey, let's take a quick break. Did you know that there's a better way to scale your agency? Whether it's web design, development, e-commerce, content, SEO, or even hosting. E2M is the reliable white label partner you wish you knew about years ago. Personally, I'm proud to partner with E2M because of our alignment in values and ethics. 
head over to e2msolutions.com forward slash thrive to learn more. Now, let's get back to the show. So beautifully said, so much of what you just shared, and thank you for sharing that, so much of what you just shared is so resonant with me because I also, when I, you know, at some point during my agency owner journey, I was the same exact way. You know, I loved being the person with all of the answers. I was staying up till three o'clock at night, almost wearing it a little bit like a badge of honor until it was like, wait a minute, what is happening here? Why am I doing this? Like, this is not sustainable. So I love that that rock bottom was essentially what you built up from within yourself to really support your own mental health, your own physical health, like your overall well-being, and to avoid other people who work on your team from kind of, you know, falling into that. But that was sort of the springboard, you know, that experience was the spring springboard for all of this. It's you essentially unveiled your own conscious leadership is the way that I would describe it, right? Like you have to hit that rock bottom and realize like, I don't need to have all of the answers. I don't need to keep grinding. I don't need to keep doing this. Like there is a better way. So yeah, really, really beautiful. And so what does everything look like now for you? I mean, it seems like you are really on the other side of that, but it also seems like there are moments from what you just said, there are moments where you find yourself like maybe going just a bit or like turning in the direction of those old habits. I guess my question here is like, how, what, what is the thought process? If you can, like, I don't know if you've ever broken this down before, but I'm curious about what is the thought process with, I notice that this is happening and I'm going to change it or redirect it before it gets any further. What happens in your mind when that, when that's going on? Yeah, I mean, that picture that I have is a great reminder. I think what happens in my mind is the progress that I've made in my life and and not wanting to go back on that progress. Is there like a familiar feeling that you feel and then you realize, oh, I don't want to go back there? Yeah, I mean, as it relates to anxiety, I mean, anyone who's listening, who who's going through that, they can feel it, right? Like they're, when you feel the adrenaline coursing through your body and you feel the, the cortisol like really building up, like it is a physical feeling for me. Mm-hmm. And there are days because I, I work remotely, I work from home. My office is steps away from where my, my wife is and where my dog is, where my kids are. And because there's no commute, there's no way to shut it off. And when I'm finished my calls at the end of the day, it's it's a really quick transition from business owner to parent and husband and family man. And when I know I've gone too far, when I know I've taken too much on, I think back to those early days when I was hitting rock bottom, I would leave some of my my calls and I would need to like lay on the floor and I'd find myself just like, vibrating from head to toe and then I I leave and I I'm a shell of a human being it was hard to find joy I I wasn't present in a lot of the conversations I I couldn't I I just wasn't myself and so when I'm on a call now and I have my back-to-back days and I'm and I'm jumping in and answering questions that comes back to me and it's like I've already been there Right. I've already had to deal with this with my wife where I haven't talked to her for three days, even though we've been in the same house, even though we go to sleep in the same bed, because I'm just so done. I'm mentally fried. And when I'm on a call, I can pretend and smile just to get through it. When I'm at home, like I let that all down. And it's almost like I wish that I could pretend with her, but there's no real space for that. And that's what's great about having you know a partner that supports you is they understand what you're going through. But when I start to feel that creeping back in, I know I need to pull back. And so what I've done since then, and yes, you're right, I'm on the other side of it. The biggest thing that I can do is time blocking my calendar. That is like, we're having this call on a Thursday, right? I only do podcasts on Thursdays. I don't take any client calls. I don't do any sales calls. I don't do any client work. I don't do anything other than podcasts on Thursdays. Fridays are my admin and catch up days, right? So if there's any internal stuff that I need to do, it is blocked off. No one has access to me, not even my team. Mondays are for marketing and strategy. I have a podcast. I've got a YouTube channel. And so I'll typically do all my video blocking on Mondays for the YouTube channel. If I'm doing any solo podcast recording, that happens on Mondays. 
And then I have work blocks Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, every single morning, because I need space to, to get my best work done. If I have to do any thought, it happens in the mornings. And then I take sales calls in the afternoon. So my team knows where to find me, where I actually am available. But it, it's really come down to saying no, right? That's probably the biggest thing for me. It's saying no, where typically out of fear, I would just say yes, or not wanting to disappoint someone or upset someone or lose out on an opportunity to potentially sell something. But I've had to say no. Whereas if you want to talk to me right now, and you're interested in engaging services, we're probably two to three weeks out for when we can actually do that. Because I've created the space where I can work, I can think, I have the systems in place right now where a lot of the tasks I was doing, I can now delegate to my team. How do you do it? Well, here's a, a Loom video on how you do it. Here are the steps on how you do it, right? And everything's there and available for you. So time blocking, saying no, protecting my time, and delegating those, those tasks that are taking me too long or taking up too much of my time to my team and really showing them, hey, not only do I trust you to do this, but I need you to do this. And I support I, you with yeah. all of the steps and the videos and, and the whatever that you exactly. need to be successful in getting this done, right? Exactly. I love everything that you're saying. <laughs> Sorry, I know it's a lot. No, it's perfect. Yeah. I mean, really what you're saying is like, not only do you do this with your team, but you do this on like a personal or uh, agency ownership level for your own personal calendar, your own leadership calendar, let's call it, right? Yeah. And yeah. you're implementing the same things that you're preaching with the team or that how you get client work done. You're doing that the same way that you're marketing your own business, that you're on other podcasts like this one, et cetera. Right. Yeah, I think it, it, it's perfect. Um, it's interesting. I think there are so many people who are like, well, it's just easier. Either I've tried that, like I've tried to delegate X, Y, Z task, but this team member that I delegated it to, like it flopped. And so my question is always, well, how did you set them up for success? Did you give them an SOP? Did you record a video, a screen capture, whatever? The answer is usually no, because I don't have time to do that. Or they yeah. should just know how to do it. And it's like, no, yeah. you, I mean, just think about you on the receiving end. If yeah. someone asks you to do something that you've never done before, you're not going to be successful at that. Or you're going to yeah. spend so much time Googling and trying to figure it out or asking other team members that it's just not going to be an efficient process. So I always say like, take that extra time, that ec those extra steps to break down what is the process, right? That you, for whatever task you want done, write it out, record a video if you need to, maybe a voice memo, however you need to do it. And right. then take all of that documentation or videos or what have you and hand that over to whoever's going to be doing it. If you need to walk them through it, record that, like do that on a Zoom and record that so they have something to Absolutely. refer back to as they're doing it. Absolutely. And it, this is not like rocket science, right? This is like just doing things the right way is what we're really kind of talking about here, but building the culture through efficiency. The other thing that made me think of as you were talking about your own sort of leadership calendar here um, and what you do is that you're modeling for your team members how they can have the autonomy and the agency to do this for themselves. Exactly. It's, it's exactly. such a great process and you're seeing it pay dividends, I'm sure. There have been so many leaders. I mean, I've worked for some of them in the past where it's do as I say, not as I do, right? And I think that's that's so backward. And, and on the front of they should know, they should know how to do this because they're an expert. And that's what they're hired for. I think that's the biggest lie that we tell ourselves as business owners. Well, I hired them. They are the subject matter expert. I told them how to do it once and they should be able to, to continue on from there. And to answer the time question, right? I mean, those two things kind of go hand in hand. One, yeah, maybe they should know, but they don't know how you do it. And so if you find you don't have the time, I mean, I have documented everything that I do. The sales process is fully documented. How I build proposals is fully documented. How I set them up, how I sell, how I deliver to the clients is fully documented. And guess what? Now I can bring my team into it. And when I say it's fully documented, I mean like I threw on Loom as I was doing the thing that I do every single day. 
-hmm. you you have the time because you're still doing the task you're doing it anyway just flip on the recording talk out loud as you're going through the process and there you go there's the beginning of your sop you absolutely have the time so that's a great takeaway if someone has the excuse of like i don't have time right to write all of that out or record all that that's a great takeaway what else can agency leaders take away from this conversation and start implementing on Monday? Often overlooked, and, and I see it. There is such a divide between what the business owner or the leader thinks their team needs and what they actually need. What you need to do, like, I don't know how your one-on-ones are structured, if you're listening to this, but include your people in the day-to-day, include them in the processes, and really ask them what they need. Don't assume that you know. You need to ask them, mm-hmm. right? So I, I would say that's most important. How can I help you today? How can I help you this week? Where are you getting stuck? How can I support you? Because what I often will think about, and when you really think about your team and the culture you're trying to create, it's these people have all made the choice out of hundreds of thousands of companies to come and spend their time with you every single day to help you realize your KPIs, your goals, your dreams, whatever you're driving for. And it just, it blows my mind sometimes how leaders cannot understand that simple fact and do everything in their power to make their employees feel like they're spending their time in the right place. Why wouldn't you listen to them? Why wouldn't you implement the systems that they're asking for. Obviously, there's budgetary restrictions and priorities, obviously, but why wouldn't you do everything in your power to make a comfortable, thriving environment for everyone that works for you, right? Like they have choices. And and then that leads to to you and your reputation as well. Like, do you want to be the leader who is the dictator and who seemingly doesn't care about how these people feel, right? Or do you want to be the leader who is connected with their people and knows who they are and knows what they need, right? So that's a bigger thing. Maybe you're not implementing that on Monday, but you can book calls with your people on Monday to start having those conversations, right? How are things going? How can I help you? I love that. Well, Marquis, thank you so much. This has been a great conversation. Yeah, we could definitely have a part two and go off on so many different trailheads, um, but I really appreciate you. So thank you for this. Welcome, Kelly. It was great to be here. Thanks for having me. And thank you for joining us. If you liked this episode, please rate the show or subscribe wherever you watch or listen. And a big thank you to the official sponsor of Thrive for this year, E2M Solutions, your white label agency partner. Learn more about their approach, services, and subscription plans at e2msolutions.com forward slash thrive.